In this short video, we're just going to review some of our basic rules of differentiation. We'll start off with the power rule. And remember the idea is that you bring down the exponent as a multiplier in front and then subtract one from the exponent. This notation here where I have the d over dx or sometimes we say d by dx, that really means take the derivative with respect to x. I've used the Greek letter alpha as my exponent to emphasize that the exponent can be any real number. So let's look at some examples. I have f of x equals 2x raised to the 3 halves power minus 5x raised to the negative 1 third power. So using our power rule, in the first term, I take 3 halves times 2, which will give me 3. 3 halves minus 1 gives me 1 half. So we have to sharpen up our fraction skills. Uh, if I take negative one-third times negative five, I'll get positive five-thirds. And then if I subtract one from negative one-third, that'd be one-third minus one, or one-third minus three-thirds, that gives me minus four-thirds. Here I have y equals 4t raised to the power of pi minus one over t squared. So let me rewrite the 1 over t squared as a power. So I'll have y equals 4t raised to the power of pi minus t raised to the power of negative 2. So apply the power rule. And so dy dx is going to be, I'll bring the pi out in front, 4 times pi times t raised to the power of pi minus 1. And I just have to leave that as pi minus 1. In the second term, I'd have negative 2 times well, negative 1, giving me positive 2. And then reduce the power by 1, so t to the negative 3 power. And the third one is one of these gotchas g equals pi cubed. This is really not a power because pi is a constant. So um, this is just a constant function. And so its derivative is 0. Quick review of the trig functions. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Derivative of secant is secant tangent. All of the co-functions, their derivatives have negative signs in front of them. So derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. And the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. If you didn't remember these, please take a few minutes to memorize these formulas. We will be using them throughout the course. Our product rule then, it's just the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And so let's find the derivative of these functions. I have x squared sine x, so derivative of x squared is 2x, so that just gets multiplied times sine x. Then I keep x squared, take the derivative of sine, I get cosine of x. Here I have g of x equals radical x cotangent of x. You might want to think of radical x as being x to the one half. And I take the derivative then, I get one half x to the negative one half times cotangent of x minus x to the one half cosecant squared of x. And where did the minus sign come from? It's because this is the derivative of a co-function, its derivative is negative. And as an aside here, before we get to example three, uh, it's worth knowing that uh, if you take the derivative of uh, radical x, that, that is 1 over 2 radical x. So 
This is very common. It's worth memorizing. So if you had that memorized, you could have skipped writing this as a power and left it in radical form. All right, so back to example three. We'd like to find the second derivative of y equals secant x. Well, the derivative of secant x is just secant x tangent x, but now I've got a product. So to find the second derivative, I'll need to use the product rule. So the derivative of secant x will still be secant x tangent of x. That gets multiplied times tangent of x. Uh, then I just have secant x times the derivative of tangent x, which is secant squared. And so you can clean this up in multiple ways. I just uh, multiplied out the power. So we have secant times tangent squared x plus secant cubed x as the second derivative. So uh, quotient rule then. Quotient, the derivative of quotient is also a quotient. We take the derivative of the top times the bottom, subtract off the derivative of the bottom times the top, all over the bottom squared. So here I have a quotient, 3x squared minus 2x on top, sine x on the bottom. So I'll start by taking the derivative of the top using the power rule. And then I'll have that multiplied times sine x minus the derivative of the bottom, which is cosine x times the top without the derivative, and then the bottom squared, so it's sine squared x. Let's do another one for practice. Here I have 2 tangent x minus 5 in the top. In the bottom, it's radical x plus 1. So uh, derivative tangent is secant squared. That 2 secant squared gets multiplied times the bottom. And then the derivative of the bottom, here I've used that fact that the derivative of radical x is 1 over 2 radical x. And that's times the top all over the bottom squared. Now the chain rule, this is the one that we're going to be using a lot, and uh, we have to think about it sometimes. It's really just the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Sometimes it can be challenging to recognize what is the inside and the outside. But let's look at some simple examples. Here I have 5 cosine cubed of x. So there is no power rule that works just for the uh, trig functions, but you can use the power rule as the outside derivative, but then you still have to take the derivative of the inside. So you think of this as being uh, 5 times cosine of x on the inside cubed. So the outside function is u cubed, the inside function is cosine of x. And so that's why I take the 3, multiply it times the 5 to get 15. Now it's cosine squared rather than cosine cubed. And then times the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine of x. And I need these parentheses so that it, it doesn't look like subtraction. So I'll put the parentheses in and clean that up a little bit. Let's bring the negative sign in front of it and write it as negative 15 cosine squared x sine of x. All right, so in our second function here, g of x equals 1 over radical of the quantity 2x plus 1, maybe I should rewrite this as a power. Uh, and if I write this as a power, I'll have quantity 2x plus 1 raised to the power of negative 1 half. So the outside function is a power rule. The inside function is just the derivative of 2x minus 2x plus 1. So I'll have 1 half quantity 2x plus 1 raised to the power of negative 3 halves. That's the power rule. 
derivative 2x plus 1 is just 2. And again, it's nice to clean this up a little bit. And we can still leave it as a power. So I have negative quantity 2x plus 1 raised to the power of negative 3 halves. Finally, here I have a tangent to the fifth. So I could think of this as being tangent of pi x raised to the power of 5. So I have an inside function of tangent. The outside function is a power. But then within the tangent, the input to tangent is still a function. There is a derivative. The derivative of pi x is just pi. That's just a constant times a function. So it would just be just like the derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of pi x is pi. So I'm going to have to use the chain rule twice. First, the outermost function is the power. So I'll have 5 tangent to the power of 4 of pi x times the derivative of the inside, which was, remember, was the tangent function. So that's going to be multiplied times secant squared of pi x. And then this has, on the inside here, we have a uh, function pi x, and the derivative of pi x is pi. So again, I can clean that up. I'll bring the pi out in front along with the 5. So it's 5 pi tangent to the fourth power of pi x secant squared of pi x. In addition to uh, explicit differentiation, we may have a function where you have an an equation where y is re implicitly represented as a function of x. So you can't solve this particular equation in any easy fashion uh, for uh, y, but we can still calculate dy dx if we remember that y is a function of x and we apply all of our rules of differentiation. So in this first example, I'm just going to go ahead and replace y with f of x to remind us that y represents a function of x. So now I have 2x squared times f of x times 2 in brackets f of x squared equals 5 plus f of x. And so I'm going to try to find f prime of x. Well, here it's pretty clear that I've got a function of x times another function of x I need to use the product rule. In the second term, the outer function is squared. The inner function is f of x. So I'm going to have to use the chain rule. And then on the right-hand side, it's pretty straightforward. So if I think of 3x squared as being my g function, this, so I have g times f of x. Using the product rule, I'll have 6x times f of x plus 3x squared times f prime of x. In the second term, then, applying the chain rule, first the power function, 2 times 2, will give me 4 times f of x raised to the power of 1 times the derivative of the inside, which would be f prime of x. And that's going to equal, well, the derivative of 5 is 0. The derivative of f of x is f prime of x. Now we have to do some algebra. We'd like to get all of the terms that have an f prime of x on the one side of the equation, all of the other terms on the other side of the equation, and then uh, factor out the f prime of x and solve for f prime of x. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to uh, dy dx and switch back to wherever I have an f of x is going to be changed back to a y and then solve for dy by dx. All 
All right, so tangent lines. Remember that the uh, slope of the tangent line to the graph y equals f of x when x equals a is just the derivative f prime evaluated at a. So here's an example. We'd like to find an equation of the line tangent to y equals sine squared plus sine squared x plus one all over radical cosine of two x plus x at x equals zero. So we'll rewrite that with the radical sign as a power. I could rewrite it as a product, but I'm going to leave it as a quotient and go ahead and use the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top, I need to use the chain rule, 2 sine of x times cosine of x times the bottom, put it back in the radical sign there, plus the derivative of the bottom. So I'll have 1 half times that cosine of 2x plus x in parentheses, now raised to the uh, mistake here, because that should not be to the negative, to the one half power. I'm taking the derivative of the bottom. The bottom has a one half power. Subtract one from one half, and I should get negative one half. Now times the derivative of the inside, I'll have, well, derivative of cosine is sine, the negative sign, um, but then I have to take the derivative of the inside and the derivative of two x is two. So I've applied the chain rule there. Derivative of x is one. All right, so that is just that whole thing that so far is just the derivative of the bottom. That still needs to get multiplied times the top and then all over the bottom squared. So when I square it, I no longer have the one half power. Now, fortunately, I don't need to simplify this any further. All I need to do is evaluate this when x equals zero. And so uh, when x equals zero, looks like I'll have to fix my mistake again. Remember this vertical bar means evaluated at x equals zero, right? And so um, Sine of zero is zero, but cosine of zero is one. So that's going to make things pretty simple. Anytime I see sine of zero, that's going to make zero. So this term will be zero. Uh, this term will be one. This term will end up being one. Here I have one plus zero to the negative one half. That's still one, but then multiply times one half. That gives me a one half. And then in the bottom, I have one. So this should equal one half. And again, correction is being made. So now that tells me that the slope is one half. Uh, and so when x equals zero, what would be the y value? Well, again, sine of zero is zero. So I get one on the top. On the bottom, uh, I would also get one because cosine of zero is one, but x equals zero. So uh, when x equals zero, y should equal one. And now I have a point, I have the slope. I can use uh, a number of uh, forms of the equation of a line to write this out. I guess I'll use the uh, point slope form. And I can solve that and write it in slope intercept form. So here's something that's a little bit different. Here we're, we're saying 
at what for what values of x does this curve have a tangent line with slope m equal to negative 3. Now this is a periodic function so there could be more than one and there may be infinitely many points where the slope is negative 3. So let's start by taking the derivative. So the derivative of sine of 2x is going to be cosine of 2x. The half as the multiplier stays out in front. Use the chain rule, and that's where this 2 comes from. The derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x, and that's why this is a plus. So now we don't want to set this equal to 0. We want to set it to equal to negative 3. That's what we want our slope to be, negative 3. So now we have this trig equation to solve. And the way it's written uh, would be very challenging. But if I make use of an identity, remember that cosine of 2x is cosine squared x minus sine squared of x. But if we combine that with cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1, we could write that as 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So I'm going to replace the cosine of 2x with 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. Why did I do that? Because now I have an equation that looks like a quadratic equation, but instead of being a quadratic equation in x, it's a quadratic equation in sine of x. So I can try to solve this like I would a quadratic equation. I would go ahead and rearrange the terms so that, first of all, one side equals zero. I like to have a positive squared term, so I got added the two sine x squared x to both sides, subtracted two sine x from each side, and then went ahead and subtracted one from each side, and so that's how I got two sine squared x minus two sine of x minus four equals zero. So I've got a common factor of two. Let me go ahead and factor that out. And now this would be like, well, u squared minus u minus 2 equals to 0. And so I can go ahead and factor that as what? Now I'd have a u as my first term in each set of parentheses. And I want to have, what, a minus 2 here and a plus 1. That will add up to negative 1. So I can do the same thing uh, using sine instead of u. And I get these two factors. And I can use that zero products property of real numbers. One, uh, either the first factor or the second factor has to equal 0, meaning sine of x equals negative 1 or sine of x equals 2. Well, sine of x equals negative 1. Think back to the unit circle. Uh, that would mean that where on the unit circle is the y coordinate equal to negative 1. And that is at 3 pi over 2. And of course, because sine is periodic with period of 2 pi, I could add any integer multiple of 2 pi and get another solution. But then sine of x can never equal 2. Remember, the largest uh, that sine of x can be is positive 1. So I don't get any solutions from that side. So we should review uh, a little bit more of calculus before we get into some new material. And we'll do that in the next few videos.